Hey everyone, my name's Chris Stanley. I'm the executive producer on Uncharted The Ox's Redemption and I also play Nathan Drake. And I'm Danielle Barcelli, one of the co-directors, co-writers for Uncharted The Ox's Redemption. And today we're gonna to be breaking down half of scene two and half of scene four from Uncharted. Let's go. Sorry, sorry, Sully. So here we have scene two and the introduction to the man, the myth, the legend himself, Victor Sullivan, AKA Sully, played by the wonderfully talented Richard Cotter. This was also our first day of shooting on set. Between Daniello, Sarah, and myself, collectively, we had an hour of sleep the night before, which is just great. All of the anxiety just bubbles up right before you get to do it. It's just a great feeling. And it actually worked out well because in this particular scene, I won't give away too much, Nate is in a different mindset and it worked perfectly for being day one because I was still trying to figure the character out. I was still a bit rusty in terms of how to play the character and then obviously by the end of filming, it's final form Nate. But in terms of this Nate, little bit of a different mindset to what we're used to. And the, you being tired actually helped with like the jittery antsiness that we wanted out of the character for that scene. Right. So this is all done in chronological order, so yeah. First time playing Nate. Bumping into Richard. Now if you guys pay close attention, you might notice something. Maybe not, something goes missing. In terms of lighting, what was you and Sarah's thought process for this? So basically a cheat code for cinematic looks is always have the light coming from uh, the smaller side of the actor, which means that if you see here, Richard, all of this side is the closest to the camera, so you want that to be a bit darker. So we put our Zion FR100C light, that's just a light bar. We basically put it in the same direction to point at Richard for this, but we, but when we did the reverse shot for Nate, pretty much this whole scene, the lighting is essentially just accenting the actual natural light that was there. One light coming here, accenting the one light coming from the actual exterior of the parking lot. And as far as camera work, we basically just did a 75 millimeter on our a7 III, and we had that on a gimbal, and we just wanted to do a bit of motion, like nothing dramatic, but just a little bit of movement. I found the last piece of the Oxus. You and Sam had it wrong from the start. Well, kind of. And for those wondering, I do tint my beard for this, otherwise I have a full ginger beard. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that, but Nate doesn't have a ginger beard. Hey, we love gingers here. So <laughs> and if you also notice, the costume I'm wearing is a throwback to the end of Uncharted 4 with what Nate wears when uh, Elena gives him the good news that she's bought JMI. So this takes place like maybe a year or two after Uncharted 4. So that's why we thought he'd still have that in his closet just lying around. So they're still transitioning from JMI to the new name for the Marine Company. So for that map, it was done by an incredible illustrator, Nicola Del Popolo. Nicola was working under Amici Studios for this project, which Amici Studios did the teaser poster for the film. She made that within a month doing hand stippling,s which is like doing little dots. And she took a whole month and she created two for us. One as the like hero and one as the stunt, just in case something happened. We didn't want to like, you know, go back to her and be like, hey, can you make a, another map real quick, like in a day. So that's why we got her to make two off the bat and she did an incredible job with the map. It's one of those things where you go back to it and you find new details each and every time. And the fact that it was done by hand twice. Twice. Just consummate professionals. So yeah, we couldn't have done it without it. Cause it's quite an integral prop through, mm -hmm. seen throughout the film. And because this was such a tight shot, anytime we showed the map, we had to step up the aperture. So we went from an F 2.8, we went to like an F 5.6, somewhere around there, just to make sure more of it was in focus, but still have a bit of blur, like past the edge of the map. Who? I mean, nomads were starting to migrate from the desert up north in the 1880s, but what if they were promised safe passage and when things went south, they bailed? Uh, so yeah, operating on collectively between Daniela, Sarah and I, one hour of sleep, which works. Won't give much away, like, like I said before, in terms of Nate's characterization and where he's at mentally and where he's at with his life. But also the fact that I had to do an American accent was quite daunting, given the fact that Nathan Drake is so iconic, given the fact that I don't have a voice that sounds anywhere near to Nolan North or even Nathan Fillion. I think Fillion is the closest sounding to Nolan North. Mm. But as long as those mannerisms of Drake are there, you know, the, the cocked smile, the, the, the smart ass approach, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's a pretty surefire way to do the character justice. But at the same time, 
with what was written in the script there are a lot of facts and they're facts they don't you don't want to get wrong because mm -hmm. we're dealing with persian culture persian mythology which is beautiful and rich and that's something you don't want to get wrong so obviously i was just trying to hit all those facts but at the same time act be in the moment and once i started acting opposite richard it all fell into place and all made sense but before that the lead up to that you, you and Sarah were, were very comforting with my anxiety. The way we wrote Nathan Drake and a lot of the characters, we tried to stay true to their personalities from the games, but we also wanted to provide the next step, this being essentially the fifth installment of the entire franchise. We wanted to evolve them a little bit more, give them a bit more to worry about a new threat, a new concern. So he couldn't, unfortunately for you, you couldn't base in everything entirely off the games. You had to do a version of Drake that the audience hasn't seen yet. Well, that's the thing. And like Nate's always relied on luck mm -hmm. and that's how he's always gotten through. But I feel like now this is more um, a, a grown up version of Nate. Still silly, still a goose, still a smart ass, yeah. still has, you know, relies a lot on luck. A lot and of you, quips. you, yeah, quips, you will see that throughout the film. Luck does play a big part in it, but it does get to a point where there's so much at stake. Mm -hmm. He kind of has to step up to the plate and put on his big boy shoes. That's why we gave. Uh, Richard Cotter, the line for Sully, your luck is about to run out for the teaser trailer and in the film, because that's basically the foundation of this story is that, like Chris said, he's always relied on luck, but that's got to end at some point. One last thing I might add, mm -hmm. when Richard and I were rehearsing our lines, when you and Sarah were setting up, I showed him a line of mics. I'm like, oh, Richard, how do you think I'd respond to what you say here? He looks at the dialogue, he goes, whoa, whoa, whoa. What is all this new dialogue? Ooh, I forgot to right. give him draft two of the script. Um, yeah. my, heart, my heart was in my throat. I thought this bloke is going to quit on the spot and I do not blame him. But because he is a consummate professional and a thespian, he learned all his new lines, which was predominantly like 80% yeah. of that scene was new dialogue. Again, a lot of facts, fact heavy. He learned all these new lines on the spot and God love him. There were times where he'd flub a line and he's like, damn it, damn it. I'm like, no, 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 not damn you, damn me. And he did it. He smashed it out of the park. And it just, he has such quotable lines in this scene. Mm. Again, a testament just to how much of a professional he was. And I still get anxiety and I cringe to this day thinking of that reaction when he realized that this was not the proper draft. But the thing is, a lot with filmmaking is mistakes. Things will happen just like anything. Mistakes are going to happen. Things will go wrong. The one thing you got to know when you go into the industry is what you have in your head, especially when it comes to a feature, is not what's going to actually eventuate. Things will go wrong. Things will go missing. People won't know lines. The equipment might malfunction, but you have to go into that expecting to adapt. And I think that's what makes the best in the industry good at what they do is the ability to adapt. And it, again, played into your character with you being you know, an anxious wreck because of what happened with uh, Richard. Yeah. It played into your character being kind of nervous and jittery and like it all worked together. So this screenshot, this screenshot in particular pretty much sums up my reaction, realizing <laughs> he, he didn't have the right draft. And that is Richard's reaction. <laughs> like, it worked out for the best. It and did, yeah. Honestly, it's one of my favorite scenes. And that was the first one. Yeah, it's crazy, man. It's, it's crazy and like humble beginnings, but by the end of filming, the character definitely made sense a lot more because it's final form Drake yep. when we finish filming. But this, this is a very different Drake that we see right here. Um, you know, trying to piece himself back together from something that's happened. But overall, I was really happy with how it turned out. Yeah. All things regardless. Yeah, Sarah and I too. Yeah. And there you have it. And that was quick notes on scenes two and four from Uncharted the Oxus Redemption. This movie will be coming out November 4th on YouTube. The whole feature length will be dropping then. So we'll be seeing you November 4th. Make sure you check out Uncharted the Oxus Redemption. Take care.